Hikaru, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. How's it going? We're doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Not super happy, but that's life, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, why? Tell us about why. I mean, we saw yeah, the game, so... so... Yeah, I mean, I, I would say um, basically I had this idea to play something a little bit slow and quiet. I mean, I, I first of all, I had a bad feeling that Prague would do something sensible and not go crazy like he did yesterday. Um, uh, and so I kind of had a feeling he would do this. But what, what happened is, I mean, uh, effectively he played this move age six and I, I just, I didn't look at it. Let's put it that way. Um, not sorry. I mean, I, I looked at this from a different move order as well, like castles, bishop e three. But anyway, we transpose. So just keep going. Yeah, I mean, basically we get to this position. Yeah, it takes takes all normal takes takes castles, um, or d six, whatever. Same thing. I go queen e one, and then he castles, and um, yeah, and after castles, like yeah, this is where I just I couldn't figure it out because what I, what I had looked at. Um, I, I guess I have to figure out how how honest I want to be with with what I say in in regards to this um to all of this, but but basically um I knew there was a line where black was bishop e six, so let's just say I play king h one for example. Say so I go king h one here, just make a random move, bishop e six, um takes takes, and I remember that I'm supposed to go c three. Um, so like I, I remember this is the structure I'm supposed to get. Um, and then like, yeah, during, during the game, basically what happened is that I put the knight on C3 and then he went Bishop E6 and I felt like a total moron basically, um, which is what happened. And, and then I'm already like very, very unhappy. Um, you know, like it's, it's, it's quite disappointing because like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Another line I looked at, I think was, um, something like knight C3, similar position, but let's just say knight C3, C5. Um, and then I think, I, I think here there's something like, uh, King H1. Bishop e6. It's not this exact position, so ignore the valuation bar, everybody. But then knight d2 is completely fine. Um, with uh, I think like queen b6 or something. Again, I don't remember the exact details, but I know in this position, this knight d2 idea was completely fine. But then in the game, what I did just gets me absolutely nothing with knight d2, and it's just horrible. Um, so like I had looked at some lines where this knight d2 was fine, and then the game, like everything didn't work. First of all, I put the knight on c3, and then he played bishop e6, so I couldn't go c3. And then here I ended up in a situation where the, I played knight d2, but it actually does absolutely nothing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of disappointing to not get anything because I was trying to play for a very small edge. And, and obviously it's disappointing that um, that the that, that Prague really had no interest um, in, in playing something insane today, but that's just how it goes. Do you think Prague played the, the couple of moves here from... Uh... From when he went castles and and ninety seven, the timing with which he played stuff and how he was not afraid of rook takes f six. Do you do you think he played very accurately there? Yeah, I mean, I I was under the impression that he played it almost perfectly. I I felt like, but but also the problem is like it felt like every move that he played, I somehow I underestimated or I was unaware of of what the simple concept was uh, on top of that, which only made matters worse. Um. But yeah, I thought what he did with knight e7 and then bishop e6 was very, 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 very precise. Um, extremely precise here. I mean, probably I should have just gone knight bd2 and then knight h4, something like he mentioned after the game as well, and it would have made more sense. Uh, but I was trying to follow themes, and I, I guess the main point is that when I went knight d2, he doesn't have to go c5. Like, that that was a big thing. Um, so not knight bd2, knight c3. Like knight c3 here, and then uh, bishop e6, knight d2. I just I I I expect him to go c5, which then kind of gets back in the same structure that I had, had looked at uh, before the game, a similar position. But then then he played uh, queen d7, which I thought was also a really really nice touch, just to go rook a8. And I mean, I, I have nothing, nothing at all. Patrick in the chat would like to know uh, if you can explain why you played h3. Um, a three is just a just just a move to uh to basically just just delay. Uh, I mean, basically, I was waiting for what his plan was. I mean, I, I remember that in pretty much every position, I play h three. I mean, again, there are different orders of how I can play it, but at some point, I felt that a three should be a beneficial move. I mean, I can go knight c three there. I can go knight d two. I mean, I also played h three because I was expecting to go bishop e six, trade and get c three actually as well. But but then he didn't do this, so like I just felt like a total idiot effectively. Um. But yeah, what to do? Were you trying later on in the game to make 
the the exchange sacrifice on F six work? Well, I mean, I I don't think it ever worked. I mean, maybe I maybe I'm crazy, but I I I mean, again, it's very hard to judge. If I was um if I was on um if I was on like an even score, it's much easier to take 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 this decision and go for it. I don't think it was good, but I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't I think know. it was acceptable because after takes takes queen h four, I thought um I, I thought that here he could simply go like king h seven and knight g eight. Good. At least I saw something during the game. At least I saw something that was acceptable. Okay, good. Good. At least I saw one thing that was acceptable. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, if this is a last round game and I have a chance and I need to win the game, of course, I play this in a heartbeat because the difference between a, between like losing and drawing is irrelevant. But at this stage in the tournament, when I feel like I haven't really been playing very well, it didn't didn't feel like the moment to just do this and, and go go crazy. Do you have a do you have a strategy now? We're going into the rest day. You say you feel like you haven't been playing very well. How do you deal with that in the middle of such a, a tense tournament? Is 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 there a trick that you've kind of learned uh, over your your years of experience having uh, played the candidates tournament previously? Well, I mean, there are a couple of things. I think the first thing that I would say is um, today I was sensible. Like I, I, at the end of the game, I'll say this: if I, if I, let's just say I was on three draws, I would have played on at the end of the game today. I, I would have played uh, C three and D four and just said, "Who cares? Whatever," uh, and played it. But I, I was getting a little bit low. On, I was down like ten minutes on the clock, and I thought it was risky um, to do that because if Prague outplays me and I lose the game, I mean, I, I again, I think like it's very, very questionable as to whether I can um whether I can mount a comeback especially with double blacks uh, after the rest day so um yeah I, I mean if, if I was on an even score I would have played either for sure but I thought b4 here was very strong and I figured if anyone's better it's black so what am I even doing here like uh, why, why why bother going for this um so that's why I didn't do it uh but but I would say basically when you're not playing well the, the main thing is to be sensible and today I was sensible unlike against Vita um so like today when I felt like it, I just wasn't playing very well, I just stabilized it and just like killed it. Whereas against Vita, I mean, I spent like 40 minutes and I took this pawn at E5 and the rest, as we know, was was uh, extremely bad. Um, so I think the main thing is just being sensible. And I mean, like, I know that I'll eventually find find my form as the tournament goes on. If I don't, well, okay, what to do? Uh, there's nothing you can do really. But I assume I will find my form later on in the event and there will be opportunities. I would say actually... Um, I know it's I know it's different, but in the Grand Swiss, I didn't get off to a great start. I think I drew my first two or three games before winning, uh, winning some games. Obviously, I was playing against players who were a little bit weaker in that field versus here, but nonetheless, uh, it wasn't the start I wanted. Um, and you just got to keep going, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll turn around at some point. So, um, overall, it's not it's not the end of the world. But then, secondly, the other point I was going to make is that from having played the candidates and had the experience. Um, and even playing or just watching it is generally it comes down the last couple of rounds. Now, of course, if Nepo is going to win today and start, you know, start his, his march towards like a plus five or plus six, uh, what to do? That's just life. But um, in, in general, it feels like it should come down the last couple of rounds. So as long as I stay steady and I pick up a game here or there, uh, you know, or at least I have a chance in a game here or there, that things could turn around. But you just have to take it one game at a time. We were discussing... In your next... mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fiona. Just very quickly, at the start of the broadcast, we were discussing uh, this Blitz tournament taking place in Toronto tomorrow. Yesterday, mm -hmm. I think you said the chances of you playing were like 20%. Um, after uh -huh. today's uh, draw, are you more likely, less likely, likely or equally likely to play? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think what I would say is that um, I am less likely to play. If I, if I played on and lost, it would have been like 99.99% chance that I would play for content. But um, I mean, I kept my head about me today and I didn't uh, I didn't decide to like go crazy and lose this game here at the end, um, which I very easily could have done. Uh, so. So, yeah, I mean, I would say right now it's very unlikely just because I'm I'm not really. I, I mean, the tournament starts at 8 o'clock. The tournament started earlier, I might play. Um, but the fact that it starts at 8 and will probably end at midnight or something, I mean, what's... Why? Why Why, why do I want to do that to myself? Like, um, why? But I just can't think of a good reason. And how uh, Yeah, I, I was wanting to ask a question. But in the meantime, I for, forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, in, in your next two games, you're going to have the black pieces. Two, mm -hmm. two in a row. Um, do you think there's something to be said 
for to to some degree it being easier to win with the black pieces because your opponents are be, going to be coming for you more so than uh the kind of defensive uh, attitude you will naturally have uh well when, i mean it's it's, it's it's very it's very hard to judge what people are going to do because like i'll i'll give i'll give you an example um so like what Prag did yesterday he went insane now i'm i'm not I, i'm not going to lie i had the same like the same natural reaction after I lost the game to beat it was to go completely crazy against Abasov yesterday and throw all caution to the wind. But then I reeled it back just because of my, my Canada's experience. And I didn't feel to me, at least it didn't feel like the right play. Um, so like people can take huge risks with the black pieces, make no mistake about it. I took a big risk in the first game against Fabiano Prague took a huge risk in the second game. Um, everybody I feel like is, has has taken a chance, but certainly um, as the tournament progresses and, and definitely there are going to be more nerves and people are going to try to be a little bit more stable. Uh, it'll probably be, you'll probably have better chances to try and win games with black just because um, uh, you, you know, you know what your opponents are going to be doing with white pieces and, and the players with white have to try and press. You can't really expect to win games with black in a tournament of this caliber. So maybe there will be chances. I mean, again, I'm not really thinking about it that way. I would just say that uh, my goal from the start has been to get try and get a small plus score. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm not there right now, but that's my goal. Um, but but I'd also say if Nepo again if Nepo wins today, which I think he is going to win, um, then it's I, I have a feeling this term is going to start going off the rails, and they're, you're going to see a lot of insanity everywhere. So anything can happen. Speaking of Nepo, shall we go there? Yeah, I mean, what to say? I mean, it's he's he's just winning, right, or not, or is it? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's just winning here necessarily, but I, I mean, the, I, I again, I'll reiterate it. Like this time control is just so completely made for him. Um, I mean, with the, with the great prep that he's that he's probably done for the tournament, tournament on top of the probably preparation he hasn't used in World Championship matches, the ability to move really quickly and get to like move twenty and put massive pressure on the clock, it, I think is just uh, it gives him a great great chances in this format. Great chances. Um, that's not to say like he's going to win this game or win the tournament, but I feel like it benefits him more than anybody else, and I don't think it's even close actually. How are you feeling about this position? It looks like Nepomniachtchi is going to get his pawn forward, trying to get a new queen. Uh, black will probably have to sacrifice, but on the other hand, this black rook is putting pressure on a lot of uh, white pawns in return. Yeah, well, wait, he's going to go, what, rook d1, bishop c6, and then king g3, I guess, or something? King g3, knight c3? I mean, it's tricky still. It's tricky, but what, what move number are they on? Sorry, let me see. They're on move number... 36. Oh, 35, 36, with thir he has six minutes left. Um... Uh, very, very hard to judge. I mean, I, I feel like the chance of a draw are higher than the chance of a Nepo win, just because it looks to me like it shouldn't be super difficult for Black to play. Um, but, I mean, who, who knows? Who knows? We haven't actually well, I... seen any of the other games, so maybe uh, we can get your opinion on what is going on there. Well, I mean, I I, I had to laugh at Ali Reza's game against Abasov. Uh, that, that's just going to be a draw, right? Yep. Oh no, he's up a uh, no, he's up a pawn here, but still, it's it's probably going to be a draw. But I mean, I I kind of had to laugh because I know there are a lot of people out there who are who are like you know play the king's Indian, go crazy, try to win the game at all costs. And I feel like this this game, um, Ali Reza took a chance. I think he was a little bit worse at one point, but um, took a chance. But still, Abasov just being rock solid with white, and I mean, I I just don't see Ali Reza winning this game, and and that's where I kind of have to laugh sometimes at people thinking it's just like super easy to like. Uh, to just like beat a player like Abasov, even though he's a very good player, and it's it's just not. I mean, it's just not. So, um, but yeah, this looks pretty 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 easily drawing. Um, I mean, with the Chester with the double Com double F pawns. Chess.com was very generous with the brilliant moves in this game. It seems. Uh, what well, are, are you trying to get me to get get a hot take or? <laughs> No, I wasn't. But if you want to give us, I mean, one. it's 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 complete nonsense. Obviously, I I don't think it's done on purpose. Um, but it's complete nonsense. You see, double X slam moves left, right, and center. I mean, bishop takes b five. That's fine. That's a good move, but it's not a brilliant move. Um, I would say it provides a good positive reinforcement for players who are newer to the game when they like do a game review and they see double X slam here or double X slam there and. Um, and then probably at least a high accuracy too, which as we know, um, there's a certain, certain player is a big fan of that. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, very generous for the double X slams, but you know, I, I would say these moves are good, but not not out of this world. Uh, so let's this... check in with Bobby as well. Yeah, so Fabiano's game. Um, oh, he's kind of gotten more than I expected him to get. Kind of. Yeah, it looks like he's got a little. He's got a little bit of play now. I'm kind he's, of impressed. He's up a pawn for no good reason, right? Basically, yeah. I mean, it's it's double F pawn, of course, so it's not for nothing. But um, zero risk, and yeah, I, I mean, I I think Gukesh with some good moves will probably draw the game. But I I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle for sure. It's gonna be a big struggle here. Do you Both think players. today will be the longest game of the uh, the longest day of the tournament so far? Because up until now, almost everything ended at the first time control or very shortly. Yeah, after. I mean today today we're gonna have long games. I think Nepo's game is gonna go forever. This game is also probably gonna go for quite a while. I mean, Gukesh could just blunder and lose, obviously, but uh, barring that, I think this will be a very long game too. So. Um, I mean, the, both these games will go forever. Ali Reza, of course. I mean, even though it's a dead draw, his game's going to go forever too because he's got to like he's got to he's got to make the fans think that he was actually trying very hard, even though um, even though it's, I mean they could draw already here. I would say like as long as Abasov plays Rook A one and gets one set of Rooks off the board, I mean it's just not happening. Just not happening. Like Rook A one actually forces Rooks off. So if you go Rook B two, I can probably play Rook A eight, Rook A eight, and. Yeah, I mean, uh, one set of rooks comes off the board, and yeah, Ali Reza can play this forever, but the, this, I mean, this should be a draw. I'd be very surprised if it's not a draw. So, this game this game will be a draw, but I, I mean, it's just a question whether they draw soon or they go on forever. And and, and Abasov is not very long time either, so, yeah, I'm just not seeing it. Just not seeing it at all. I guess for you, the important games are Nepo and Karana, since they are quite strong players and and could mm -hmm. run, like you say run away with the the, the lead Oliver I mean, even if he manages to win he will only be on uh, two points out of four which is I mean as good. as I mean I, I don't necessarily like I'm not saying anything about opening strategy or anything like that but I, I would say that like when I went into my training camp to get ready for this event my attitude was quite simple try and get a small plus score something like plus two plus three and if someone's going to go insane like Nepo did in 2022 for example at plus five plus six that's like nothing I can do about it. So if that happens, that happens. But you know, I'm I'm not really I'm not really worried about that right now. If it happens, that's life. Uh, let's talk about uh, the tiebreak. I believe I, I can't remember what it was last time, but I feel last time there was no playoff for first. Uh, no, there there was no playoff for first. But, but yeah, I mean, time... basically, yeah, basically, like I said, it's like um, isn't there? There's some saying I forgot what it's like. It, it's like you need um. You need a dollar. It's like I, I can work like an hour and, and and get a dollar, or I can work like six hours and you're still going to get a dollar. Right? Maybe I've got the wrong. I've got a phrase in my head. I can't remember what it is. Someone in chat can tell me. But there's some phrase that it's like it, I'll do something and you'll get this, and I'll do that and you'll still get this. Um, I'm sure someone in chat knows the phrase that I'm thinking of. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's it, but but anyway. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the tiebreaker is. Of course, I don't, I'm not thinking about that at all. I just want to take it one I game at a time a, and go from there. Yeah, but I think it's a playoff, which I was wondering if that is new. Do you, regardless of, but do you think that's a good thing? Um, I believe they've had, was that policy instituted after 2018? I, I thought after 2018 they instituted that, but maybe I'm insane. I, I thought that when... um. Or wait, no, not 2018. It was it 2016 when Sergey won on tiebreak over Fabiano? I think it was. Um, uh, I feel like after 2016 they changed that, but I could be completely crazy. Um, I, I don't know, but but certainly, yeah, that 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 probably is a good thing. Um, in general, to have a tiebreaker between between the players if they tie for first. But I mean, again, it's what four four games are still are like nine more to go, and um, you know, it's a marathon, not not a sprint. Ten games to go. Nine, ten, seven, whatever. It's all the same. I mean, oh, it doesn't, doesn't much matter. More games you can win. I mean, like I said, I'm not thinking. I, I mean, I'm taking one game at a time, trying to play interesting chess, try to play good chess, and hopefully good things happen. Um, It's really that simple. I mean, I'm not particularly unhappy with the way, with, with my result, other than the fact that I lost my mind against Vita. I mean, other than that, it's been pretty standard. Like, I, I feel like um, the other three games haven't gotten a whole lot. They've been draws. It's life. Um, nothing you can really do about that. It's just the one game against Vita that was very uh, unfortunate. But, you know, you have to keep moving forward.
Let us ask you the age old question. Tomorrow is the rest day. Do you have any plans? Um, no, I have no plans. I mean, it's it's very unfortunate that it's a Monday. If it were like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Saturday, um, I could I could definitely stream, but unfortunately it's Monday, so uh I don't don't really think I'll be doing a whole lot. Um hopefully the weather will be a little bit better. It's obviously been way too cold here, so maybe the weather will start uh, it'll start to get warmer, but I just don't really have plans specifically. Um not not really. No plans. What to do. Let Life me... is boring. <laughs> let me ask you another question and maybe you don't want to answer this one at all do you have any seconds with you on site yeah i mean of course chris chris is here with me chris little john um he's pretty much is at all these tournaments so so he's here that's he's here my wife is here as well um so they're 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 my uh my my travel buddies for for this event uh much like isle of man and plenty of other events so well we'll see I don't know why I said we'll see that does that's not really an answer to anything, but um, they're they're here and we'll see how it goes. Sorry, that's not an answer. Um, Hammer, do you have anything else? I feel like we talked so for such a long time yesterday <laughs> yeah. that I I may have used up all my good questions. Mm. And I'm not I mean, even, I, I I'm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in general with the event, it's it's mostly just trying to get get my bearings um, and and try I try and play better. Again, I just don't really feel like I've played very well. I, like I, I think like the result isn't bad, but even today, almost every move Prague played, I was ready to do something, and then as soon as he as soon as he played the move, I was like, wait a second, there's actually this reason behind it. Like I, I didn't realize he went queen d seven to go rook eight, for example, um, and that's definitely been quite concerning. Um, that I feel like I'm just missing ideas uh behind my opponent's moves or not even seeing the moves at all frankly so uh it's just been it's been it's been it's been it's been a struggle so far but basically just trying to get my bearings and uh i guess get get into the event a little bit more you talked about boring monday how much of the free day do you plan on um spending on chess oh uh, i'm not really sure i i would say that in general um I mean, I'll, I'll probably do preparation. Uh, as, as I said, I think pretty much every player here, at least the first, like for up to the first rest day, they have a pretty good idea of what openings are going to play. Cause you know, your, your opponents and the pairings in advance. Um, and then it starts to get interesting. I think after that, um, so I'll probably be looking at a fair amount for the, uh, for, for the next game against, I think it's Ali Reza. Maybe it's Nepo. I'm, I'm not actually sure who I play first, but, um, but definitely, uh, I'll, I'll be look I'll be looking at quite a bit of chess, uh, and, and going from there. Should we maybe bring up the Nepo game just because yeah. it feels like that is more interesting to mm -hmm. look at. Sure. Uh, he's still thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's not, I mean, it's, you have to do the calculation here. Like, this is not trivial. Like, rook d1, bishop c6, king g3, knight takes c3. Takes takes king up two rook a three is very very murky um because black has all these pawns yeah like this is not trivial I mean I think this is for a computer I, I bet this is winning because of some puzzle like study but for a human I I really don't know like I, I'm Wait, really did, unsure which pawn did you say I'm taking c three c three yeah yeah I mean like I said this is probably some puzzle and there's a certain player from Norway um, who probably would figure out the whole puzzle in this end game and win. Um, but you have to use a lot of time to try and figure it out. Do you think that's one of Magnus's strengths? Like, I mean, he, he has 50, he has 50 strength, but I mean, end games, obviously he, he finds everything. He finds everything in the end games. So There's probably knight F6, knight D7 though. That's actually probably not that difficult. Uh, but knight, knight D7, you rook C4. That mm -hmm. was my plan. No, but this is probably winning. King g3 takes takes rookie four oh. d8. This is winning. Yeah, yeah. This is winning. Yeah, this one is winning because rook d8 and the pawn's too slow. Yeah, the pa pawns are too slow. Black's not pushing p fast enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, yeah, yeah. Elra's time. So. Um, this is this is completely winning for white. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it goes on for quite a while, but um, I mean, again, Nepo has to use time to try and figure it out. So we'll see. 
What is your assessment going into the... Well, wait, there was a move. What did he play? He played Rook D1. Okay. He did play. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, so hard to judge. So hard to judge. So hard to judge what's going to happen here. But I mean, I I, I feel I feel like Nebo is going to win this game. Just I just have that feeling um, that he's probably going to win this one. How you guys are so quiet it? today. You're so quiet. Yeah, what no, happened? it's it's. I think Hammer and I need to spend tomorrow's rest day on coming up with a new line of questioning. Yeah, it's like well, it's it... like crickets. <laughs> Now, yeah. I was going to ask you, actually, uh, going into the first rest day, um, some of a lot of the players, well, half the field is new to the making their candidates debut. Who has maybe impressed you? Who has disappointed you? What are your thoughts on your I mean, co-competitors? It's it's much too early, really. I mean, I, I would say that, um, I mean, v, Vita has, has, was impressive. I mean, obviously, he, he beat me. Yesterday was a very bad game for him. I, I would say if he's able to save this game, I'll be very, very impressed because that will show that his nerves are holding up to some degree, and that's always been the the sort of the knock on him is that his nerves generally are not there in the most critical moments of games. So if Vita can save the game today, I'll be extremely impressed. Um, Prague has impressed me a lot, too, just sort of the, the fearlessness. I mean, obviously, he took a massive risk yesterday. Very easily could have lost that game. Um, it paid off for him when he won against Vitit. So uh, he's been pretty impressive to me. Very, very, uh, I, I mean, I, I've said it before, but I feel like out of the Indian juniors, he's the one that I've I've, I've really uh, just been amazed by overall. Gukesh, obviously, on plus one right now, too. So, um, yeah, I, I would say that they've been impressive. I mean, Nepo is, uh, Nepo, uh, I mean, I, at this point, I'm not too surprised by his performance, but very, very impressive uh, preparation overall. And um, uh, is this a blunder? Is this a start of going uh, wrong or not? King to E4. This is a start of going wrong. King to E4. Uh -oh. Only winning move. It's not a, I don't think it's a hard move to find here, actually. Um, and maybe it's not even winning. Oh, because you just sack the knight and then you have rookie B2, rookie 2. Ah, 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 you have rookie two, rookie two. Yeah, yeah, still not, still not, uh, still not trivial. But yeah, I would say like I've been impressed by his prep. But I mean, again, there's so many people who are on plus scores and it's it's so early, it's hard to judge. Um, I mean, what to say? I think it'll be much clearer after everyone's played each other once. So by the second rest, it'll be very, very clear. Another question, I saw uh, some videos from on site. There seemed to be quite a lot of fans. I remembered something we talked about two years ago when it was in Madrid. You, I think you said at the time, you know, you were happy to see how much uh, enthusiasm there was, how many fans, how, uh, mm -hmm. so how is that whole situation in Toronto, the first time the candidate tournament is taking place in uh, in Northern America? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, um, it's certainly good that there's so many people showing up. I mean, I, I don't want to like be, be negative, um, but uh, it, his vibe is a little bit different than it was in Madrid, for sure, I think, at this point. But still, to see the fans showing up, enjoying the games, um, there's not much more that you can really, really uh, ask for. So I, I think overall, it's 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 good that there are fans here. I mean, of course, uh, like the room is very small, so like the live spectators are very few who make it in, but that's what it is. But I think in general, the enthusiasm, so uh, it, it, it's a good thing for chess at the end of the day. Hikaru, in Madrid, it was 42 degrees outside. It was the middle mm -hmm. of June, and now we're playing start of April. And you mentioned the other day that it's quite cold in in Canada. Do you think that affects the players, the performance? Does anyone benefit mm -hmm. uh, from that? I mean, I, th I think people who are used to cold environments probably benefit. Someone like Nepo, I guess, benefits. But it, in terms of, but I mean, you, when we say benefit, I mean, like, that's a very minor thing. Like, it's not something where it's like, you're going to be like, you're, you're going to be great. Um, but probably it does benefit someone like Nepo very slightly just because he's used to the, the very cold, harsh Russian winters. Um, so maybe it benefits uh, some of the players from Russia, perhaps, I would say. But Overall, I don't think it should have a huge impact. I mean, I could see it maybe affecting the Indians because although they're doing well, obviously, because I mean, India generally has a pretty uh, tropical climate, I think, unless I'm crazy. So uh, probably that's a good thing for them. For me, obviously, it's it's not a good thing. Um, I mean, I basically 
by by choice, not by accident, uh, do not spend time in places that are cold anymore. Um, that's that's a decision I made a couple of years ago, and uh, that's never going to change again. So maybe it maybe it affects me very slightly, but I, I still don't feel like that's a, really a. I mean, that feels like more of an excuse for why you're an excuse for saying you're doing badly than like a, an actual reason. You are coming to Norway Chess next month, right? Well, Norway Chess is in Stavanger, which doesn't get yeah. that cold to begin with. Um, and then secondly, of course, we're talking uh, the, the end of May. I mean, yeah, end of May in, in, in Norway is amazing. I mean, it's it's great. It's fantastic. I, I, I agree, but I'm not sure all Floridians would. No, no, I mean, nor, nor Stavanger in the end of May, like, but put tournaments there year round, not year round, sorry, but put tournaments there from like May to like, september i mean I'd, I'd i'd live there probably um but but anyway yeah like i, I don't think it makes a huge difference but I, but i would say that like I, I definitely i'm not i'm not enjoying the weather i i'm not but to say that that's like a reason i'm playing badly is really not 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 right either i mean i'm just not playing well um imeno i'm not sure how to read the name out in the chat earlier you were talking assessing uh performances so far by the other players and he's asking, what about Fabi? I think we didn't get to. Yeah, I mean, Fabi's been just just steady, steady Fabi. Um, I mean, playing playing good shots. I mean, I was surprised at how, how big a risk he took yesterday against Ali Reza for sure, but um, pretty steady. And did we just get a blunder or not? Yeah, according we to did. Engine, this is a losing move from the yeah. lit. But why? Why? I don't understand. Ah, Rook because you know what's going to happen. Nine. What's going to happen is you're going to end up in an end game now where white gets the pawn on c5, right? Oh, or just bishop c1 and your rook is dead. Oh, the rook is just dead on b3. Oh, I see. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wowie, yowie. Yeah. You're going to have to go b4 out of desperation. There's probably some some way to like zugzwang the, or not zugzwang, but trap the bishop like rook h8. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. And Nepo, I think, will find it. I, I expect Nepo to find this. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. And he has 31 minutes. I mean, we'll see if Nepo uses his time wisely here. But I don't know. Nepo in the Canada's is just uh, a very different player, than it seems like. I mean, he's just playing great chess. Great chess. How do you great think chess. he does it? Like, how is there this one tournament? Because it's I'm always impressed because Nepo seems like Someone, you know, we saw it in the match against Magnus who can crumble so easily mm -hmm. when things don't go his way. And the candidates is such a high pressure tournament. Like, how do you explain that he I mean, always just, shows just, up? Just great preparation. I mean, he's played a couple of world championship matches. You know, when you get to a world championship match and you have a lot of people working for you, you're not going to use all that preparation. Um in a match, he, or, or yeah, you're not going to use all of it in one match. Like I bet he probably still has preparation from the match against Magnus he hasn't used, and then he also played against Ding. So I just think he, I mean, he has a huge team of seconds who've worked for him on and off. I mean, Peter, people like P Peter Lecco, for example, I don't think he's working for him now, but just a lot of great, great seconds, a lot, a lot of great preparation, and um, uh, I mean, it's 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 showing, it's, it's showing. Did it surprise you talking of seconds that Jan Gustafsson, who used to work for Magnus, is now working for Nepo? I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. I feel like there there are a few of those guys who 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 worked for with everyone. I mean, I was just kind of surprised to see Jan here because Gustafsson because I thought he was working with Wesley So in one of the Saint recent St. Louis tournaments. So I was kind of confused by that. Um but it's not I, I wouldn't say it's like a huge shock. Um it's it's mildly surprising, but it's not like crazy or anything. Oh really? Because I read somewhere that Gusti was was working with uh, with uh, Anish maybe, uh, and at the very least he was captain of the the Dutch team. That uh, sounds what, what yes. Your, that... mm -hmm. Go ahead. What What are your feelings on kind of these helpers um, switching teams so so often? Is that a a good sign for chess that you know their people have good relations and that we're accepting of, of people trying out different combinations or do you think that's a, a bad thing? Well, I mean, it's, it's good for, it's good for the economy. Um, if you're, if you're a player who's past your peak and you, you want to coach, I mean, it's definitely a good thing um, to have these opportunities uh, with, where so many players are trying to um, trying to hire you. I mean, that's, that's, it's great to be able to make a living like that. Um, 
So for, for those guys, I think it's, it's fantastic. Absolutely. And I think, um, but, but also I think it sort of speaks to the fact that, um, that everybody's looking at the same handful of people and trying to, uh, trying to make it work. So, yeah, it's not too surprising. I just feel like there might be some conflicts perhaps when you, you have people, you know, like working with everybody, but I mean, you have people like Vladimir Chuchulov who's done that for the last like 10 plus years and doesn't seem to be an issue whatsoever. So I'm, I'm not, um, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I remember there was a a bit of a conflict between uh, Magnus and Anishgiri when when Magnus uh, I don't know if poached is the right word but he he uh, hired uh, Jordan van Forest as hmm. a second who had previously worked with uh, Anish and I feel like Anish maybe said something like that uh, well he was definitely unhappy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to, my question isn't precisely about that, but I want to relate it to it. Yes. Um, do you, when you work with people, do mm -hmm. you, uh, do you uh, like have clauses in the contracts on whether they can work for other people in a set <laughs> amount of time or whether they can share what you work on or, or whether that's uh, pro proprietary information? Look, I'll just be honest. I mean, I, I, I'm a content creator first. And I'm not saying that just because, but I don't believe in any of that stuff whatsoever. Like if someone does work for me, that's great and fine. But try and have some clauses. They can't work with another player. They can't play this preparation. Like, I mean, in my opinion, that's just a bunch of bunch of rubbish and total nonsense. Uh, so no, I, I, I don't believe in that. I know there are players who who have said things like you can't play. You, you, like if you look at some opening, you can't play it for six months or something after that. But uh, I'm pretty pretty laid back and easygoing about these things. I just I, I think it's all nonsense. So no, of course of course I don't don't have any of those sorts of things. I think it's just it's it's ridiculous. I I feel like I mean if if someone works with you, it's like they should get something out of it too. It should not just be a one way street whatsoever where you get all the all the gain and they get nothing out of it. So I mean of course if I work with someone, they they can play those openings. They can work with someone else. Like I mean that's just stupid. Well, th of they get money, no. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I mean, like, come on, if someone, if someone, if someone is working with you, like, also, I would say that chess has changed a lot, like a lot of opening ideas are not relevant for long periods of time, like, you can have some great idea, and then someone uses it, and like, and then your idea is busted very quickly. So uh, I feel like the surprise value or like these secrets are they just don't hold. And I remember many years ago, actually, back before somebody had lost their mind, I was, I was in a taxi on my way to the closing dinner at the London Chess Classic. And a certain former world chess champion, I, I think there was someone in the car who asked him a question and it was about, um, you know, whether there were like any opening novelties that he had come up with that he had been unable to use. And um, and said former world champion uh, essentially said that he had come up with this novelty in the, I think, Queen's Indian, this D5 pawn sacrifice. And he had like waited to use it for a couple of years. And then Veselin Topolov um, actually used the same idea and really popularized it. And got all the credit, of course, as well for for the idea. Even though this this former world chess champion um, had had been saving the idea for quite a while. So, like, I just feel like the the notion of trying to like save ideas or these things, I just I, I don't really believe in it. I'm sure like some of the more serious players, maybe they they do that, but to me, I just I, I just I can't I can't really believe in that. I just I think it's stupid and it's completely ridiculous. Hammer, can we maybe just update? I think we've had a move. Um, and Hikaros, you mentioned the other day the training camp. Uh, I think you mentioned two names. You mentioned Niklas Hushenbeet, you mentioned Chris Littlejohn. Can you reveal how many people were at your training camp? No, that's, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's good enough for now. That's good enough for now. <laughs> um, so we had, we saw the winning move rook takes d5 played. Do you think Jan has this figured out? I mean, if you, if you don't play bishop c1 here, the problem is I don't know what else you can do. Like it's, it's almost an only move here. Rook d2, I guess is possible to consider, but bishop c1, it, to me, it seems pretty obvious actually. Like, I mean, I mean, Bishop C1, I, I just don't know what other move you can play at this point. That's the problem. Um, so I, I think Jan is basically forced to find it, I, I would say. I think he's just actually forced to find the move. Um, so, yeah, I, I do expect him to win here. He has 20. I mean, he seems to have done everything right in this game. I've, you know, he used his yeah, team wisely. I mean, he's just very, very, very good player in the uh, in the candidates. Amazing player. Um, yeah, I, I expect him to play Bishop C1. I mean, I think the thing is, he seems, 
he see, he seems so comfortable and so confident. And I, I also feel like this time again, not to reiterate, but this time control, I think gives him a huge advantage over pretty much every other player here uh, because he naturally moves very quickly. And when he can play 20 moves of opening preparation, you get down to like you're below an hour very, very quickly. It's just not, it's nothing but pressure, pressure, pressure. Someone in the chat is saying Sag, Sag to the Hikaru is in a bad mood. I don't know. I don't feel that way. Can you talk about your mood a bit? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not really in that bad of mood. I mean, I'm I'm obviously disappointed with the score I have so far. I'd be much happier if I won an even score with four draws. Um, so I'm a little bit unhappy about that, but but I but I would say that um I, I don't know. Like, I, I know everybody expects me to be like going crazy, like uh, about like winning this tournament. Like, I'm just trying to play one good game at a time. That that really is my my the only thing that I'm I'm really thinking about with my approach towards the game. So, um, I mean, I, I think people are expecting me to be, like feeling desperate already because like I'm I'm like one point behind, probably one and a half after today. But like I'm just taking it one game at a time, trying to play good chess. And I mean, I still believe I'll have opportunities to win games. And if I don't, well, so be it. That's life. Nothing I can really do about that if my opponents play play great. But uh, I'm not really in a bad mood. I'm disappointed with today's game specifically. But I mean, what to do? Bishop, Bishop C1. C1 on the board. Oof. Yeah. I mean, he's just a very good player. Very, very good player. I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, and you know what else I just realized? There's actually a trick, isn't there? Bishop G6, King E5, B4. I mean, you can even you can even go King F6 here. I think, right? I think I think yeah. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, that's so gross. That's so gross. Yeah, this just wins. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Would you amazing say stuff. this is the best game of the tournament so far? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, easily, easily the best game. Um, really? And, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't blunders in the game, but I mean, Nepo's technique here, like I look at this game and this looks like a game that that um, uh, L. Magnus Carlson would win. It really does look like a, a Magnus kind of game. This is this very, I, 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 this very sneaky end game maneuvering. Like uh, it reminds me a lot of Magnus. I just can't get over Jan's win against Ferruja. I thought the opening prep there was just so mm. crazy good how he sacrificed a pawn and and gave himself yeah, such a I, I mean, king position i mean he's played two world championships he's got all of russia behind him what do you expect i mean <laughs> what do you expect um I I, I, I I i think anyone who plays something you know very unique uh mm -hmm. in this age of computers and everyone kind of having access to a lot of the same information, I I, mm -hmm. I think that's incredible, especially when the computer initially like, I'm I'm not even sure it was initially, but says that black is better, but you make the assessment that well black you know it's just an interesting game with chances for both sides, and and yeah, mm -hmm. well yeah. I I guess this game is good as well. In general, Nepomniachtchi has been just so impressive. Yeah, he's just playing. He's just playing uh, great chess. So I mean, he found king f six. Well, I mean, it's very easy now. This is not difficult here. But there's also nice on bishop eight, rook d eight, bishop d seven. You can sack the rook and go king f seven and queen. That's also a nice touch, touch, touching finish. So, but yeah. So all right, you guys. I think I'm gonna go. I'm 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 getting a little bit hungry. I want to go like go eat some food. And I, I I don't know why, but here in Toronto, at least downtown, people act like they're act like they've never been outside before. And they're literally like lines of like 30 people at every like restaurant and everything else. Like it's maybe the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I'm probably gonna get going and uh, figure things out. Can we just quickly get the, your assessment in the two queen end games? Uh, Fabiano um, up a pawn. But this looks like a dead draw, actually. Queen d4, right? You just put do the triangle here with queen d4. Yeah, I mean this. This, I mean a five. This has to be a draw. I mean the only way White can win is if you can somehow walk the dog and get the king to like h five. Like if you could put the king on h five and the pawn on h four, then maybe you could win. But of course you can't do that. Um, yeah, I, I just I'm not like this. Like queen d two. I mean, come on. Nah, I mean I. I mean I, I just don't see Fabi winning. But this game is going to go on until the cows come home for sure. This okay, game will go we, on for a long time. We have another queen end game in the Abbasov game. 
Ah, Ali Reza got to a queen and pawn end game. Okay, this, I mean, it's still a draw, but there are chances for Ali Reza to win this now. Yeah, I mean, there are chances to win. I still think this will be a pretty pretty easy draw, but there are chances for sure. Abasov might not be in the greatest shape to defend a long game if he's not feeling great. Right, but on the other hand, I don't know what black does. Like, if you go queen f3, king g6, queen e2, f5, takes, takes, and then... Queen e2, f5, takes, takes, king h2. I still don't really understand how you're winning here, though. I mean, I mean, black is obviously better, but... And yes, Ali Reza will play this forever, but I don't really see Abasov losing this. I just don't see him losing this. He could, but I don't see him losing it. Hey, Kyra, okay. thank you so much for mm -hmm. joining us today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy uh, your I'll dinner. I'll do a recap and see you guys, see you guys soon, okay? Good luck on uh, Tuesday. Good luck on Tuesday. Have a good rest day. Yeah, hopefully I can win quickly and play title two, so I get back to the real stuff. But we'll see. So, all right, I'll see you guys. Okay. Have a good see one. You. Bye. Okay. Bye.